Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on playing it safe when you're facing uncertainty about the other side. We're now extending the material that is covered in Chapter 7 of Game Theory 101 Bargaining. Check the video description for more information on that. And actually, we're going to see a nice connection to some material about the complete information game that we've seen previously. So before, I've said that this complete information game makes a strong assumption, specifically in like an ultimatum or a Rubenstein setup, something like that. We have a situation where Albert exactly knows Barbara's outside option. And I mentioned that, well, you know, it's a useful assumption, but sometimes it's not true and so forth. And it might be a very strong assumption to make. But actually, what we're going to see today is that the assumption isn't nearly as strong as it seems. And in fact, a complete information game closely approximates what an incomplete information game looks like, a situation where Albert doesn't know Barbara's outside option, as long as he has a very good idea what that outside option is. And to see this, we're going to generalize our game of uncertainty that we've been playing around with before. So this is that game, it's the structure of it is exactly alike, where Albert doesn't know whether Barbara is one type or the other, he makes an offer to Barbara, and then Barbara accepts it or rejects it. Now, what I've done previously is fix Al uh, Albert's payoff for having an offer rejected at zero, and Barbara's outside option of, in this case, lowercase b, being equal to 0.25 on the left, and 0.5 if it's uppercase b on the right. So in other words, I was saying that the weak type of Albert, rather the weak type of Barbara has an outside option of 0.25, and the strong type of Barbara has an outside option of 0.5. Here, I've generalized that to being lowercase b, or uppercase B, that will allow us to see what happens as we change those values of lowercase B and uppercase B. And I've also generalized this so that instead of Albert receiving a payoff of zero, if Barbara rejects the offer, he instead gets a payoff of A. So again, all I've done from before to now is generalize this game so we can talk a little bit more generally, excuse the repetition, about what goes on here. A couple of assumptions here, just to make things clear about what we're talking about, what our domain of cases is. We're looking at a situation for notational convenience where lowercase b is less than uppercase b. So this is what separates or differentiates the weak type versus the strong type. That Barbara is this weak type, has a payoff of lowercase b on the left if she rejects, and uppercase b on the right if she's strong and she rejects. And now to be a little bit clearer about the domain of cases, I only care about, and you should only care about too, situations where a deal could actually get done if they knew each other's outside options. So that last assumption that A plus uppercase B less than one essentially says that if Albert knew Barbara's outside option, would they be able to reach an agreement? Is bargaining efficient for them if Albert knows Barbara's outside option? And in this case, that's what we're looking at here. The reason that we should make that assumption is that if a bargain deal just isn't possible between the two types, then the game doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant and we wouldn't care about it anyway. So that's why we're focusing on that situation right there. All right. How do we go about solving this game? Well, it's the same as always. I'm going to begin by making a claim that the optimal offer for Albert is either lowercase b or uppercase b. And the logic of this is exactly as we had seen in the past where we actually had fixed values for Barbara of 0.25 or 5. Why is this the case? Why is the optimal offer either lowercase b or uppercase b? Well, it can't be the case that Albert optimally offers more than uppercase b because that guarantees that Barbara will accept the offer but Albert could do better for himself by scaling that down a little bit, getting it closer to uppercase B, still having both types accept, and receive more of the surplus for himself. So anything greater is too much. That's not going to be optimal. Anything less than those two is also not optimal. Why is that the case? Well, that guarantees rejection here, and yet we know that a negotiated agreement is efficient, and so Albert would be better off increasing his offer to Barbara to make sure that at least one type of Barbara accepts. That would be better for him than guaranteeing rejection. Meanwhile, anything in between lowercase b and uppercase b is not going to be good. Why is that? Well, 
we know that it's enough for the weak type of Barbara to accept, but not enough for the strong type of Barbara to accept. And so if you're going to get yourself in a situation where only the weak type is going to be accepting, you should be scaling down that offer to be the minimal amount that the weak type needs to accept. Otherwise, you're leaving extra surplus on the table for no good reason. So that means the optimal offer is either lowercase b or uppercase b. Well, let's play around with this a little bit. What is your payoff if you're Albert for offering uppercase B? Well, we know that Barbara always accepts, and so your payoff is just going to be the remainder, how much of the deal that you're getting, which is going to be one minus uppercase B. And if you offer lowercase B, we know that Barbara is going to accept if she is weak and reject if she's strong. So in the first case, she's weak, that occurs with probability P, and Albert receives the remainder of the deal in that case, which is 1 minus B. So that's the left side of the payoff. And on the right side of the payoff, we know that Barbara is strong with probability 1 minus P. And so Albert just receives his outside value in that case, which is A. And so your optimal strategy, if you're Albert, is to make the safe offer of uppercase B, if your payoff for making that offer from two slides ago, 1 minus B, uppercase B, I should say, is greater than the payoff from the last slide, which is the mess of algebra on the right. Now, if we solve for P, that's the probability that Barbara is weak, we would see that you should make the safe offer as Albert if P is less than 1 minus A minus uppercase B divided by 1 minus A minus lowercase B. And that doesn't actually seem like anything significant, like why should we care about that? But this actually tells us a lot about what's going on. So let's think about that inequality, 1 minus a minus uppercase b divided by 1 minus a minus lowercase b. Notice that when uppercase b and lowercase b are about the same value, so as the possibilities of Barbara's outside options become increasingly alike, that fraction becomes essentially equal to 1. Right? You're taking the same value and dividing it by the same value, and so if that's the case, then your, your fraction is going to be equal to 1. And if we go back to the previous slide here, if the right side of the inequality is equal to 1, remember that P is just a probability. It's a probability that Barbara is weak. And so if P is less than 1, well, that's always the case in that particular situation. When that right side of the inequality is essentially equal to 1, P is always going to be less than that. And so Albert will always be making that safe offer in that case. So what does that buy us? Well, if Barbara, rather, if Albert almost knows Barbara's outside option when B is, uppercase B is relatively equal to, very close to being equal to B, then we know that bargaining always works. Albert always makes that safe offer and guarantees acceptance. Now, there are two implications here. One is about playing it safe in the face of uncertainty, and the other is how do we interpret a complete information game of, of bargaining? Well, first things first. What we see here about uncertainty is that uncertainty does not, in fact, guarantee bargaining failure. We can have a situation where we have bargaining and then inc uh, insert, ins uh, <laughs> this is hard to say, insert uncertainty into that bargaining situation, and we would have uh, an outcome where you go from an efficient, an efficient result, again, tricky to say, an efficient result to an inefficient result. But uh, uncertainty does not actually guarantee bargaining failure. You can be kind of uncertain about a bargaining situation, and you still are guaranteed to have a negotiated solution. As long as those outside options of Barbara are relatively alike, you're always going to make the safe option, and you're always going to see bargaining succeed in that case. So it's not true that uncertainty guarantees bargaining failure. You have to be particularly uncertain for you to be make uh, for you to be willing to make the risky decision that is going to result in the other party rejecting with po uh, positive probability. So again, to reiterate that one more time, uncertainty does not guarantee bargaining failure. It can make bargaining a little bit harder to do, but it does not guarantee that you're not going to, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to fail to reach an agreement. All right, what about the second part here? Well, the complete information game that we've explored previously is a close approximation to the situation that I'm describing here. When lowercase b is relatively close to uppercase b, we're still in a situation where you guarantee that you make yourself an offer that is going to be accepted. And if you're doing that, 
well, you know, we could have a more complicated model where we're impl or rather explicitly exploring the incomplete information parameters, but that's a lot of extra algebra and it doesn't really get to uh, anything that's relevant anything that we haven't learned from this particular lecture already. So later on in this course, and this is where it's going to be particularly important, when I start talking about other reasons why bargaining might fail, specifically commitment problems, we're going to be focusing on situations with complete information. And that's not because necessarily those situations reflect uh, a negotiating outcome where there is uncertainty involved, but rather we're approximating that. We're seeing, hey, there's a situation out there where, you know, we have kind of sort of complete information. It's close. There's a little bit of incomplete information, but it's not too much. And so we're just going to ignore the fact that that might even be there because this complete information game is in fact a close approximation. So we're going to stick with that and that'll make the algebra a little bit simpler when we start exploring these other reasons for bargaining failure. All right, that wraps up this lecture and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Take care.